All right, welcome everybody. This is going to be uh, my trading recap uh, for April 13th, 2023. We'll just go through some of the trades you've seen me make this morning. And then also what I did uh, after that first hour, uh, which I do continue to trade for two additional hour in my live room. But I want to address a couple of things. First of all, if you guys are liking these videos and you want me to continue, um, give me a thumbs up. Support my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Please pass it on to others that you feel may be interested. Uh, make sure you also hit the notification bell. So at least I know that you're interested in getting uh, more videos. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is, <clears throat> you know, the question is why, why do you want to follow me? Why would you want to follow Kevin LaRocca? Well, Kevin LaRocca has been trading for now 40 years. Um, and, you know, I've been doing this every morning for a while. I know I don't get a lot of viewers, but once again, I am a one man show. Uh, I am a trader. Um, and you know, I don't put a lot into the marketing effort only because that is not my forte. So if there's things that you feel that, uh, I can add to this to increase my viewership, please let me know because I'm not going to continue to do this if I can't get more viewership only because I'm only doing it as a service to let other traders know that there is a better way and an easier way of trading for me uh, I have narrowed this down to just a couple things that I look at um, <clears throat> but the other thing is I mean why would you want to listen to me It's only because I have 40 years of trading experience now I don't have all the uh, the glamour of a big marketing company behind me uh, I don't I'm not a hot I don't high pressure anybody I never have uh, I don't pressure people to, to upgrade to learn some more of my techniques that's just not that is not my thing but i would like to see my viewership in, uh, increase a little bit and so if you guys have any thoughts on how i can do that because i would like to continue to do this first hour free for everybody but it's um i don't know if anybody's really getting any value out of it i hope that you are because the idea is i want to show you that there is an easier and a better way of trading than what you're used to. This is my own. These are, I use two basically tools. Now, some may call it an indicator, but I have, uh, I look at indicators differently. I, a tool is something that you're going to use to give you, uh, an entry and an exit. Indicators more of kind of give you an indication of what's going to happen, right? So an indicator to me would be something more like a moving average or a Bollinger band, something that you can change the parameters on where a tool would be something like VWAP, because VWAP, you cannot optimize, you can't change it, it is what it is. So VWAP to me is a tool, it's not really an indicator. And so I have just two tools that I've developed. Uh, the other thing that's nice about my tools is not only the universal, I can use them across the board in whatever market, and that's what I try to demonstrate every morning by trading some stock, I trade some commodities, I do a little bit of Forex, it doesn't matter what the instrument is. These two tools will work in everything. But the beauty of what I do is the tools give me the exact entry and they give me high probability targets. Now, you know, I see a lot of people on the internet and they'll give you entries. I see a lot of services, they give you entries. And then they give you like multiple targets. But the problem with that is, number one is once you enter the market, do you know, does anybody tell you what the probability uh, of it hitting a particular profit target? So if you buy it, do you know what your probability is it's going to go and hit a particular profit target? Uh, and But I do, and I think that's real important. Uh, and a lot of the entries from a lot of people were very subjective. And a lot of them, their exits, there's really no rhyme or reason to it. A lot of them just, they get in and as soon as the momentum starts to drop, they get out. But that's not always the best way to trade it, particularly if you have a high probability of it going up a certain amount. So if you know it's going to go up another 10, 15, 20 cents, why get out at five, right? If you have a high probability that it's going to hit a certain level before it reverses, all right? And so <clears throat> these are very, very powerful tools. But once again, if I don't get the interest in what I'm doing here, then I'll just keep it to the... Uh, to the private room 
and um, it won't bother. So what you can do, you can help me by asking me more questions. I want to know what you guys are thinking. What do you want me to look at? If there's any particular stock, I always say, give me a stock, throw it out. I'll look at it in the morning or if there's a commodity or whatever. Uh, once again, I want to make sure I'm giving you guys value. Of course, I can't give you everything um, for free because I put, you know, 40 long years into developing these and I'd like to keep them fairly close to my best. I do not, I do not mass, okay, offer what I do, but I am willing to share it with people that are very serious about trading. So with all that's being said, um, please let me know what you need and, and I'll do my best to try to deliver it for you. Okay. So I traded a couple things. We'll take a look today. Actually was a really good day. You've heard me say Thursdays are always one of my best days to trade. And today did not let me down again. Uh, you heard me start off with gold. I initially was buying gold this morning. Uh, and I bought it several times. This is pretty much in sequence here when I was buying three lots at a time. But I held on to this trade. I don't think it lasted even more than five minutes. So let's take a look at the gold. Okay, so coming in on the morning, this yellow line right here you see was the actual entry point. I didn't get into it a little, I didn't get into it late. So that's why I put on more size because I had a very high probability I was still going to hit this target. Now, had I entered at this point down here, and it wasn't because uh, I was hesitant. It was because I didn't see it until it was too late, all right, because I am trading in other things. But I still liked it. We still had this profit target sitting up here. So I went ahead and I put on uh, additional size in order to take it, take you know, take advantage of this move up to target instead of just entering down here at a smaller size. But once again, uh, the pattern showed a buy down here and Einstein showed a high probability over 72% that it was going to hit this target. All right. That's what I'm talking about. You know, I'm not just getting in sitting here waiting. All right. I'm once I get in, I have a target, but I also know what the probability is. This also helps me decide on what kind of size I want to put on my trades. And there, yes, there were other targets up here. But like I said, in gold, I'm looking just to trade that first target. And then there was another trade. I did not trade gold anymore for the day, but I did want to show you something to show that, you know, I talked about trend is not your friend. Momentum is your friend. So here's another. And this was a short later on in the morning. This came around 1030. I did not take this trade just to let you know. But uh, we did have some patterns coming in to sell it at this point where you see this yellow line is. And then the target was down here at the screen line. So once again, uh, you know, had I been watching gold a little bit closer and I wasn't involved with uh, the stocks because we had a really good day in stocks, then I probably would have taken the short on the gold because I did, I did, it, we were definitely seeing some weaknesses in the gold. And that would have been a really nice little trade there. But once again, I did not take it, but it was there. The patterns did catch it. And Einstein did provide me with some really high probability levels. All right. Um, so let's see what else we have. Um, the mini Russell. I think I have a chart here. Let's take a look at the mini Russell and we'll see how it did on the mini Russell. Uh, all these were called this morning on that first free hour that I do. I always do it in the morning from uh, 9 to 10 uh, Eastern time. First hour is free, then I continue on. Uh, this was all done during that first hour. So, um, I'm sure you watched. If you were watching this morning live, you saw me take this gold trade, and then I also jumped in on the uh, the Russell 2000. Let's look at that real quick. All right, so here we go. This is going to be the trade we made on the mini Russell this morning. Buy entry came in around 904. This yellow line was my entry point. I did have a stop sitting down here. I never got close to the stop. Um. I held on to this trade. I think it was a good hour or so. Now, I did have multiple levels sitting up here. These green lines are additional targets. Once again, I get out at first target. So once it hit my profit target here, I did go ahead and I did exit on that. Uh, on these two trades, just on these two trades, uh, on the uh, the mini Russell and the gold, you know, I picked up uh, $891. And, you know, everything from where to get in, to where my targets were, every single one of these 
uh, had over 70% probability of getting hit today. All right, so if you think that kind of information will help you, um, then, you know, I think it would be something you, you would definitely want to uh, take advantage of. Now, keep in mind that, you know, I've been doing this, like I said, and I don't want to keep harping on this, but I think this is important as traders. We all, or at least when I was a beginning trader, we all look at the guy that, you know, had the big year last year that, you know, made a million dollars or was up three, four hundred percent back there. Back then, we really looked at percentages, which I think are more important than how much you made. Because, you know, I can say I've made a half a million dollars, but, you know, if I'm trading a four million dollar account, you know, percentage wise, that's not as much as somebody that's, you know, trading a million dollars and makes a million dollars, right? So, percentages are a lot more important, I think, overall. Um, but, uh, so anyway, everybody's going to have a good year or two and most of the people like seeing i'm sure some of these guys are really good traders um I, but the question is do you want to follow somebody that's been trading for 40 years do you want to trade or follow somebody that's only been trading for you know two or three years because everybody can have a nice run all right and so what i offer you is i offer you 40 years of experience and also i've been through all kinds of markets um, most new traders have not they haven't seen a truly bear market um, most everybody's been buying into a bull market and, and it's easy to buy when everybody's buying but can you make money on the short side can they make money on the short side and you know maybe selling stocks may not be your preference uh, right now I'm only focused on buy buying stocks but when it comes to indices absolutely gold natural gas and any of those commodities uh, currencies I'm gonna be buying and selling all right so I take advantage of both sides and like I said I've been doing this for 40 years so I've been and seen everything I've seen every indicator out there quote indicator I've seen all kinds of styles of trading I know people that have been successful for two or three years and then they blow out uh, but then again I know people that have been trading for well over longer than I've been trading and still doing very well so that's and these this approach that I have designed here of trading is once again it's very simplistic folks okay so if you like all the flashy things on your charts and all those lines and you want to make it subjective and you're looking at support and resistance and all that stuff which I don't look at because I don't need to I've got these patterns but if that's the way you want to trade then you know and some people make it work, uh, but it's a very, very difficult way of trading. Most people will blow out because it's 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 very it takes a lot of experience, and it's a really complicated process. My process is more simplistic, and the advantage of that would be the learning curve is a lot shorter, which most people don't have the funds to go through. You know, months or even years of losing before they become profitable. All right, so I think these tools would definitely help you shorten that learning curve. All right, so I don't want to keep harping on that, but I'm telling you guys, if you look at my reviews, every single one of those reviews on my website are legit, innovatortradingstrategies.com. People that have been trading with me longer than 20 years, okay, think that this is the way to go, okay? They've abandoned all their other tools and they use this because trust me there is not only do these tools work in the universal but there is a logic behind it. it's not just some random line that i put on the chart right uh, there is a reason a reason why these particular patterns work there's a reason why these levels work all right and uh, why is that important because it builds confidence all right so <clears throat> just a quick example would be people that use vweb a lot of people look at vweb and they go if it's going down to VWAP, they feel it may be support, right? Or if it's going up to VWAP, they may think it's going to be resistance. But that's not always the case. That's subjective. It could go way above VWAP and then come back down. It can go way below VWAP before you get the bounce and goes back up. Or it may never. Okay, it's kind of subjective. You got to watch it. But the nice thing about my patterns is I don't care about VWAP. I like to see where a lot of orders are but my patterns override all that my patterns still hold up knowing what my percentages are so 
if I'm coming up to VWAP and my target is above VWAP, then I'm going to hold on to that target. I'm not just going to get out of VWAP because there's VWAP there because my target is still saying that it has a probability, a higher probability of going further and hitting my target. All right. So that's why these tools are very unique. I'm not doing what everybody else does. I'm not following the crowd. And, you know, let's think about this realistically, folks. All right. All these indicators that you use, everybody else is using them out there. And the stats are, they say 98, 98, I think 99% of traders, at least the ones that I've seen, retail traders do not make money. They lose money. All right. And they search and they search and they search for that perfect quote indicator without really thinking about what they're really doing. What's that indicator really saying? All right. And if, that, if you have to optimize it, then it will never hold up. And none of the ones, and we, we have torn this thing apart. I've spent literally thousands, tens of thousands of dollars on research and buying data and looking at all the indicators. And you can't get these things to hold up even 30 days out. All right. And I know some will argue with me. Uh, and, you know, if you're using an indicator and you've been consistent more than five years, I'd like to know about it. Okay. Because you need at least a good five year history before I would consider it something that would uh, make sense. But I bet you, I bet you, most of the people that use indicators only look at it as a kind of a reference to see what other people are doing. I know the big institutions use it to see where all the public is so they can take advantage of it. But most of your successful trader have thought, every, every single one that I'm aware of, they're price action traders, all right? They understand price action. You understand how the markets move. And that, these patterns basically are tuned into that. They expose that, those tendencies. But it is a price action strategy. The patterns and the targets just give me an idea of where to get in and where to get out. And I have probabilities um, on that. So having probabilities, this is a game of probabilities. I want to know what my probabilities are. If I know that, then I can adjust my size. Okay, so that's enough of that. Uh, let's take a look at stocks. Man, we had a great day in stocks. Let's take a look at stocks real quick here and see what we did. All right, so let's see what we did, man. Just a big day. This may be the biggest day I've had in a while, Not if I'm not mistaken. L-U-C-Y, that was my big one. Loved L-U-C-Y. L-U-C-Y has been popping up a lot on my radar, but I had to buy early this morning. Buy came in around 8. Ah, I think this was right before I went live. I remember I was long L-U-C-Y. And then I know I was getting in the gold. I think I got in the gold earlier, didn't I? Can't remember. Anyway, so... I. I was in the L-U-C-Y. I had to carry L-U-C-Y for a while. So I got in shortly before 9, before I started the morning show. And I did, um, it. I had 1, 2, 3. I had. I know I had more levels up here. I just don't know what they I only plotted 3. No, this was 4. That was level 4. That's where I got out. So anyway, uh, I bought into it. Never even got close to my stop. Great, just great action. Yeah, in the beginning, I did have to go through a little bit of pullback. But once again, the pattern was still showing that I was going to hit each one of these levels. Had a 70, over 72% probability of being hit. All right. So, uh, went through two levels here. I was still holding, holding. I liked it. I was seeing a lot of strength coming in. Once again, every single one of these uh, lines here is based on Einstein. So, and there is a pattern associated with each one. So I had one, two, three, four. Well, this is my entry. So I had one, two, three, four patterns all setting up for buys, all projecting. They're all different levels. <clears throat> so I had this. So once it came up here and it pulled back, I said, that's it. I'm getting out. Um, because I didn't think it, the other level was so much higher that I probably had to hold on to it for most of the day. So typically what happens on these these uh, levels is, yeah, they all still have 72% probabilities, right? It's just that as you go up higher and higher and higher, it just means you may have to hold on to the trade longer, all right? And so I don't like to hold on to a trade. Honestly, I don't like to hold on to a trade more than five minutes, to be honest with you. But sometimes with these stocks, it takes a while. It really takes that opening. You got to get that big thrust on the opening like we saw here at, 
you know, look at that, like right at 8.30, right? So I was kind of got in. It was quiet, quiet, quiet. I didn't buy any more down here. No, I didn't buy any more down here on, on uh, LUCY. Maybe I could have because it wasn't getting close to my stop. And then right on the opening bell, you see, it's just a lot of excitement that comes into the market. I may be, I don't even remember if I mentioned that. There may have been another stock I was watching that I may have mentioned that. Wait for the opening. So anyway, so it took off. Um, pull back a little bit, still a lot of strength. Once it came up to this upper level, I went ahead and I took my profit and I got out. And that was it. That was my big trade on LUCY. Uh, OCEA, also just another great trade. Let me let's see what I had early this morning. It was like Lucy, 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 Lucy. Okay, what was the other one? Um, yeah, it was, it was OCEA. It was OCEA. That's the one. So I'll let's take a look at OCEA real quick and then we'll go ahead and we'll wrap this up. But that was the one I was saying. I think we need to wait till after the opening to really get it going. And I think it took off after that. I thought there was one other one I had in here. Nah, I think it was OCEA. All right, let's take a look at OCEA and we'll wrap this up. All right, so let's look at OCEA. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. So I remember when I got into it. It came in around 9.15. As soon as I got into it, we started pulling back. And I think I mentioned that we're probably going to have to wait for the open in order for this thing to take off. And it's kind of pretty much what it did. Same thing with uh, kind of the same action we saw with LUCY. But anyway, as soon as I got into it, it pulled back. I still had a stop down here. I thought it was going to get stopped out. Now, that also would have been reversal. But like I said, I'm not taking any shorts right now. But that would have been a reversal. My I had an add-on point right in right down here. So when we pulled down and we bounced back up, I liked that little doji right there. Saw some price rejection. That was my add-on point. This was also a, a level that was already uh, in place before it even came down here. This was also an add-on point. So I went ahead and I added on there. And I had multiple levels up here. I had a ton. I had a ton of levels up here. I ended up getting out because I even had much higher levels. We went through one, two, three, four, and then somewhere, I think it was around a quarter till or something, we had another pattern set up, and it was like, target was like way up here or something. But when we broke through four levels, I even mentioned, I said, man, I am getting out of this thing because typically, even at three, we start to pull back. All right, so you hit, you usually hit level three. That's almost a sure sign that you're going to start pulling back. But when we got up to level four, I really didn't want to play it any longer. Always hindsight is going to be 2020. Obviously, it went even higher, but I went ahead and this is where I took my profit. So I was in this trade for quite a while. I got in around 9.15 and I didn't get out until right before we ended our live show this morning at um, 10 a.m. Eastern. So that was my other really nice trade. Everything else was just kind of chopping, just getting in and getting out. Did a little bit of SPWH. That was in the room afterwards. That was in our live room. Uh, CXAI, a lot of people cleaned up on CXAI. Now, I had almost 500 on CX. CXAI. I gave up a lot of a little bit there on the end. Uh, got a little bit of greedy, but I did put much on. I think I had like 200 shares on. And once I'd given up, like it was like 30, 40 dollars when it got out. Um, but anyway, I have I was a little bit over 500 on that. WW was another good one that I had on my radar this morning. You heard me talking about WW. I, I took a little bit out of that. ADAI. I mean, any of these, any stocks that have AI, any of these. Um, these AI stocks are just really hot right now. I mean, you can almost get any of them and close your eyes and buy them. I mean, it's just crazy. But um, made a little bit on uh, ADAI and then, of course, uh, CEI was also a really nice trade. So, I mean, everything was going up. I think we had like, let me see, 72% were gainers today out of all of them, 72%. So it was just a really nice day. Everything was just going up and it was... Uh, it was a pretty easy to trade. You just get in, you wait for the patterns, you hit target, you get out, and then you just wait for more patterns. And it was just like one after the other. Um, and the other thing is when it comes to selection, now keep in mind that 
you can trade any stock that you like. It doesn't matter. The patterns are going to work. But keep in mind, if you're trading a slower stock, you may have to hold on to the stock for a while. And that's something that I teach is how do I select my stocks? And, and it's, it's really quite simple. I'm really, I use, I have several scanners that I look at. I'm looking at, uh, I do like to see the top gainers. I also like to watch the top losers. All right. You can have some really nice trades watching the top losers, but I like to watch the top gainers. I like to look at the ones that have the most volume. Typically look at a stock between one and $10. I'll, I will look at some over, over 10, but I'll never go higher than 20. I like to see low float, you know, something below, um, you know, 20 mil on float. And uh, in terms of volume, I mean, it's got to be at least two, three hundred thousand pre market um, for me to look at it. But what a big part of it is going to be what is the spread between uh, the bid and the ask? That's real important. So, I mean, sometimes you you know you only have a penny. You may only be at two, three hundred uh, thousand shares. Uh, of a stock, but you have that really tight spread, only a penny spread, right, between bid and ask. Then you're going to see some that may have a half a million spread between bid and ask, and, you know, you could have 10, 15, 20 cents spread. So that's going to be the difference there. Even though they both may have really good setups, and both, both of them may have really nice buy setups, right? Patterns look good. Uh, you got several lining up. Targets are up there, but man, problem is you get in one of those and you've got that spread between bid and ask, 15, 20 cents. I mean, you're down 20 cents just getting into the darn trade. So <clears throat> just little things like that to watch. But I like to get into the um, the most active ones because like I said, I don't like to hold trades very long. So it doesn't mean you couldn't hold longer if that's what you want to do. So let's say you're a guy that likes to trade an Apple stock or maybe maybe you like to trade Tesla or whatever the case may be. It really doesn't matter. Uh, Einstein will work, but if it's really, really slow, keep in mind that it could take a while to hit your target. The targets are still going to have those higher probabilities. You're still going to be shooting over 70% on those targets getting hit. It's just that you may have to hold on to it. And so it doesn't make sense to um, get into a particular one stock and, and just trade it that way because you may not, you may not have a trade all day. You may have maybe only one, but if you guys can keep an eye on um, these most active stocks where you see a lot of interest in it in the morning, um, you know, sometimes you'll see, you know, 9 million shares traded, you know, pre-market, which is, if you think about it, it's just crazy. I mean, those are the kind of things we want to be looking at because we can get our targets. That means we're going to get in and get out, watch for low float. You want to make sure the float's low so you get good movement. If the float's too high, probably not going to get good movement. So little things like that are good about what stocks you want to get into. Once again, these are very short term. This is not something you want to marry. Now, I will tell you one other tip, just one other tip here is that if you have something like um, Lucy or uh, OCEA or CXAI, it was a really good mover today. Okay, so within the next couple of days, it's probably going to end up being another nice mover. So I like to keep those on my radar because if they just, particularly if they just come out of the gate and they started moving, you know, not one that's been maybe going on for the last five, 10 days, but, you know, maybe something that just started moving today. Uh, I like to keep my eye on those because I know it's going to probably have another move, probably have a little pullback and then start to have another move in another couple of days or so. Sometimes it could be the very next day. Sometimes it may be one or two days later. So um, I like to keep those on the radar. So little things like that will help you guys get in and selecting uh, the better stocks. When it comes to indices and commodities, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Just, um, you know, you just... Watch the patterns set up. You look at those levels. And like I said, I usually only go for first level on that. And, um, the, you know, indices are still pretty easy to trade. Um, but stocks, you have to be a little bit selective depending on, you know, how you like to, like to trade. If you want to be in and out, you know, five, 10 minutes, then you want to trade these, uh, these most volatile, uh, stocks and, and keep size, keep the price of the stock down so you can put a little bit of size on them. Right. I mean, why trade a hundred dollar stock? When you can only maybe put one or two, you know, where you're trading, uh, you trade a dollar stock, you know, and you could put on 10, 20, you know, or 100, 200, 300, 400 shares. You're not going to be, it's going to be hard to do that if uh, you have a small account and you're trying to buy a two, three hundred dollar stock. It's going to be hard to put on, you know, two, three hundred shares. So that's it. That wraps it up. Great day. Once again, Thursdays never disappoint. 
uh, we do trade Thursday nights with our subscribers. We do come in and we uh, we trade uh, a lot of Forex in the evening. So we'll be back tonight with our subscribers trading some Forex. But that wraps it up for today. And uh, we have one more day for the week. So we'll be back again. Please join us in the morning once again. Let me know what you guys would like to see. Uh, I want to see more interest in this. Um because I really would, um, my approach is totally different. It's different what you're used to. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, so I have the experience. And I can show you guys some really cool things that you're not going to find in any book. You're not going to find on the uh, on the internet. This is my own stuff. Um, and this stuff is, is just really, really cool the way it works. All right, that's it. Everybody have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.